All right, hello. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, I don't know why the stream uh, kind of starts a little bit late. I don't know, it takes a second for YouTube to pick up the stream, but I'm glad you're here and I've, uh, I'm glad you're uh, joining me today. So uh, yeah, here we are, Eric Samuelson um, and Steve and Sean. Good to have you here. We're gonna dive into Photoshop Masterclass. Uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, basically kind of creating some art, art with heart. Can I just say that that's the cheesiest title ever? I thought it was a good one and I'm like, that is so cheesy. Looking at it later, I'm like, oh, that's so bad. So excuse the cheesy title. Uh, I just like the idea of, yeah, sometimes you can create some fun things in Photoshop, uh, but maybe we can go a little bit deeper, right? Especially uh, in this day and age. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch screens if I can. Hey, David from Utah, feel free to say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Um, Yes, it is. It's gonna actually rain and then snow tonight here in good old Denver, Colorado. So uh, yeah, so that's what's happening. I just did a search for Photoshop composites. You get lots of things. So you can get some pretty fun things, right? Um, and uh, you know, in some cases you kind of wonder like, what is the person going for? Like what, you know, we can do an example of this surreal photography, right? I've done this before, trust me. Um, but could we do something that has maybe a little bit more emotion in it uh, at the end of the day? So that's what we're going for. It sort of um, tap into some emotion or just like art that has a little bit more heart, like this one, for instance. And again, this is great if you wanna learn Photoshop, but like what is being said? I think this is just a cool image at the end of the day. And I'd like to think about just art that inspires you. I put this together, by the way, uh, just a quick um, list of some of my favorite artwork, and honestly, just in general, artwork that tends to inspire uh, myself and others, right? And elicit a little bit more emotions. That's what we wanna do. I feel like we're stuck indoors, and I think art and Photoshop is a great outlet uh, at the end of the day. We can't go outside, but you know what? Our art can get out there. And we can kind of put our emotions down on, uh, you know, in pixel form, basically. I'll kind of, excuse me, I'll kind of roll through these. These are actually my favorites. Uh, I will just take this link. I think I can do this. Let me open up this version right in here. Move that over. Let me make sure I get a nice shareable link. There we are. And I'll share this with you. Uh, again, this is just my version. We have the Scream by Edward Munch, Munch, Munch. I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, this this is a very eerie piece as well. This elicits a, an emotion, right? Just talks about how he was caring for his mom for like seven years and he wasn't allowed to leave and he had to paint between uh, 12 midnight and 2 a.m. So this is how this guy felt at this time. I'm like, hey, it's okay to create that in Photoshop, right? Uh, George de la Tour, Magdalene with the smoking flame. Again, uh, you can see she's thinking about something and she's holding a skull, very symbolic. I don't know what's happening and that's okay, right? Open to interpretation, super fun. Two Fridas by Frida Kahlo. So this is the kind of the idea of the uh, loved and unloved version, the high society version of Frida and uh, more of a humble uh, sort of like a, gosh, I don't know what the term is, like more traditional sort of like, you know, her her peasant background, if you will. Um, but again, just the two different sides of Frida Kahlo, which I think is super cool, right? I can go on and on, right? Uh, Death of Marat, so this is basically a French revolutionary leader that was murdered, right? I don't mean to get so morbid, why? This one's beautiful, by the way. This is actually from uh, Hamlet as well. That's disturbing, Paul, what's the problem? What is going on? Life and death, this is getting scary. Don't worry, I end with a nice one, which is all about uh, the swing. And I think, you know, sure we're stuck indoors and someday we'll get to go outside and do all the fun things we used to. Um, and uh, if that's what you're feeling, you wanna get outside, let's convey that uh, in good old Photoshop. All right, so 
<laughs> so I'm totally interested in who like, if you guys have like a favorite painting or artist, I would love to hear from you just like Jennifer's doing right now. The Broken Column uh, is the favorite of Frida Kahlo's. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's cool. Just like having, we have the ability as designers and artists and creatives to elicit emotion from people and go beyond just creating a pretty image at the end of the day. So, uh, with that being said, I'll just paste this in here. We don't need to, this isn't a lecture, right? Let's see if that goes through. There you go. Uh, there's the link to this Evernote, which is just a couple of examples, right? I'm sorry it got so morbid, but I love this stuff, like Gustav Klimt. There's the kiss, there's this one, life and death. This is awesome, right? So crazy. So many cool pieces, right? And we could do that and we're gonna use Photoshop, right? Uh, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Let me open up Photoshop. We're gonna do lots of compositing as well. And I talked about sort of art with heart and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, art with heart, oh. Right. How touching, right? And I'm gonna dive into this. You guys may or may not like this, but again, I have this human heart. At least I think for me, uh, personally, like on a personal level, I feel that, um, let me open up some other files that I have. Again, I just got this from uh, Adobe Stock. I'm gonna be working with that. And I'll dive into a couple of these other items. So, a couple different like rib cages that I've been working with. Because at least for me, I feel like, oh, you know what? I'm I'm trapped. You could look at, you know, sort of having to be at home is like you're kind of trapped inside and you wanna go outside and I get it and you can, uh, but stay indoors, people. Um, but in general, I feel like I, I think of like the rib cage, which is used a lot, right? So we have this rib cage. Obviously, a cage is meant to contain something that maybe wants to get out. In the case of our rib cage, it's there to protect us. So you can think of this rib cage in two different ways. Uh, you know, maybe you're, you know, feeling kind of constrained, but ultimately it's there for your safety. So that's why I rendered this out. I used Dimension, by the way and uh, just had a skeleton that uh, I can go ahead and open up, but that's what I use to just render this out, um, which I can do real fast. Salvador Dali, Temptation of St. Anthony. Oh, I gotta look that up. I love Salvador Dali. Have you been to his museum? Try to go there, man, that's... Uh, I actually have only been to the outside of Salvador Dali's museum in Figueres, um, France. It, like, I tried to go there two different days and it was closed both days. I had to take an hour train ride both ways. Uh, Caravaggio's, I love Caravaggio as well. Um, sweet. All right, so again, this is just using dimension, right? Jumping in, we can see this is an element we could potentially work with, right? And that's what I did. I just angled it a certain way. I rendered it, right? So that's what I can do. I can kind of get an interesting angle like so. Maybe it's kind of like that, kind of so you can kind of maybe see more of the inside and I can render this out. I'm gonna call this uh, rib cage two, because I've done this a couple times. I'm gonna use cloud rendering so that way it doesn't slow down my machine, right? It's gonna save to Creative Cloud Files. I'm gonna do this, it's gonna save that render and that's what I've done there, so. Uh, Ooh, the French National Museum lets you download and use a lot of their images. I love it when they do that. Oh, tell me the URL, Sig Brown. The French National Museum. Oh, I want to go there right now. Ah, I love it. Um, I love that stuff. Uh, I've talked about the um, uh, Rijksmuseum in um, Amsterdam, which is also a very good resource. And they let you remix that work, which is so good, right? So... Again, jumping out here, we could even find some things that work for us. So yes, we have access to, you know, Adobe Stock, which is what I was using before, right? Stock.adobe.com, right? Uh, I would use uh, Turbo Squid, right? That's where I've gotten 3D models as well. So jump in here, skeleton or skull, right? Or whatever you need. I don't mean to be so morbid, but I just usually sort by free. So give me some of that free content out there, right? There's free content. Uh, in Adobe Stock as well. Uh, just takes a matter of taking a, a matter of finding it. And by the way, might I add, in Dimension, there's already free assets. So this is rendering, by the way. Hopefully, I, yep, there we go. It's rendering, it's at 9%. I'll go back to Design View. 
right in here, starter assets, we have a ton of stuff as well. So I can deal with some splashes, things like that. So again, not starting from scratch, because I only have an hour. Uh, we talked about Carvaggio. I love Carvaggio, right? He's awesome, right? Uh, ooh, most of Dolly's stuff is in was in Melbourne. And, uh, 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 awesome. Steve, you got to see some cool stuff. Uh, yeah, so um, let, let's kind of come up here. Um, you know, I, I do a lot with flowers because it's all about like sort of starting, you know, a new, I feel like, I love these. And again, you guys probably know me and you're probably sick of this stuff, but these are great assets to use that are free uh, for me to use. Uh, yeah, and you know what? The, I think Mia, you're right. It's like there's sometimes some of the morbid stuff's kind of forbidden. I personally like contrasts. Contrasts make you think, you know? <coughs> Excuse me, that was just the coffee. Um, but uh, you know, when you take something big to small or you reverse something, contrasts, are just a great topic in general. That's why like you always see, I've done it before too, whales in the sky, right? You look up in the sky, oh, the sky looks like water. I'm gonna put a whale up there, right? That contrast is always really interesting. I'm gonna log in really fast and get this party started because I'm gonna use these flowers actually. I love them so much, right? Down here, download, right? Huge image. Hey, guess what? Go ahead and remix it as well. What will I create? I have no idea yet. Actually, I do have a great idea for this, right? So it starts with the idea that I'm working on. Let's take a look at this piece. There it is. Bring that into Photoshop. I have only an hour and I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. And uh, you, uh, you, know, you, make, you make my daily life so much better. <laughs> Sig, you're hilarious. <laughs> uh, all right. Sig, the Paris uh, uh, Paris Museum Collection. Oh, cool. Thank you. Looks like it might be in French. I'll have to take that and uh, try that out as well. Again, that's why I like that this is live as we can kind of collaborate. I definitely have an idea and like point of view. But again, like you said, perfect for resources. Right, let's jump in here. Let's learn from really the masters. Like so many people have been through so many things. And I, I could imagine you might be going through something. I think, again, Photoshop is a great way to just kind of get those feelings down in pixel form, right? So that's what I'm doing. Just grabbing a couple images. There's two in Photoshop. Boom, boom, and we can continue. All right, there we are. Art with hearts, oh how sweet. Look at how huge this image is. Look at how great this is. This is so nice. The difficult thing with this is cutting it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Uh, first off, I don't want this border to get in the way. So I'm gonna cut it out. Oh, uh, wait for it. Actually not, let's just do this. Bam. Command J to jump that layer, duplicate it. Just like that, I'm gonna grab these flowers. I know these borders are gonna get in the way if I do select subject, so I'm just cleaning it up a little bit, right? I'm like, hey, you know what, don't grab those borders. Now let's actually try this. So we'll go into the properties panel, and what I need to do here is remove the background. This is a pretty complex image, right? Come down here, right over here. Since this is a pixel layer, remove background. Zoop. Hopefully you can see that. And remove background. Give it a second. I haven't done this before because I just downloaded it. You're right, select subject, select subject, plus remove background. It removed quite a bit, right? Uh, probably more than I needed, but actually might not be bad for what I'm working on. Um, you know, in this case, I'll maybe Jump the layer if I know it's gonna be a solid color, for instance. Let's take this one instead. Delete layer mask. Uh, I'll come in and 
Uh, I would probably, actually, people don't like the magic wand. I don't know why people have a problem with it. Some people call it the tragic wand, which is not the case. You just don't, know, you need to know when to use it, right? For a while, it was the only tool. See, as I click, I can use this. I can actually adjust the tolerance, right? So we wanna start out really light and I can go in and obviously add to it uh, a little bit more each time. And why did I pick such a complex image? Why? Why did I do it? I don't know. Why did I do it? So that's usually my process, is I will select remove background and just see what happens. Cause it's like one click could get me 90% there. In this case, it didn't quite do it, right? Uh, let's inverse this selection using the lasso tool adding to this because look i need this huge flower you know how these selections work bam uh that already did a much better job so let's take that bring it over to this piece that we're working on there we are let's scale it down right like that and maybe I can use some of these bits and pieces for what I want to do. All right. Ooh, the color search. Uh, Steve, what are you talking about? Uh, raw pixel is another one. Okay, cool. You know, I have a love-hate relationship with some of these sites because I don't know why some people just upload <laughs> some stuff for free. Like, I like free stuff, but I think people have false uh sort of visions of grandeur like they're going to upload these cool photos and they're going to be famous and everybody's going to know their name because they're seeing their photo and all they're doing is giving away free work you know so it's a it's a it's a tricky one you know all right there's the flowers let's clean this up a little bit more i could see more of that right in there right boom plus 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 you get the idea I will also use, go in here, um, the uh, quick selection tool for some of these areas. But right now this is working pretty well. I have it set to just 19, tolerance of 19. And uh, that's going pretty well. All right, that's done. Let's fill it with black. There we go, you get the idea. Let's kind of shrink that down and convert it to a smart object. We can clean it up later, right? We can make this part of our heart right over here, right? So I like this, again, this whole idea. Let's see how our rendering is going. Uh, still kind of dealing with this like whole cage idea right here. Let's take a look. Yep, there it is. It's done rendering. I'll just download it to my desktop. There it is. And now I can use this in uh, some of my art, right? Again, some people like the morbid thing. Some people might not. Hello, Muriel. Jennifer, trust me, I missed so many spots. It's crazy. I know I did. I know it's ugly. It's not ugly, actually. But there we have. We have this version. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Hmm, interesting. What else do we have? Uh, this one, here's another one, really straightforward. It's not as dynamic, like this, this perspective is dynamic, right? If I'm gonna show something straight on, can be kind of boring. So I might consider using this, just to be honest with you. Yes, I'm calling my own work boring. I'm like, ah, uh, it's boring, right? Oh yeah, let's drop that in there. One of my favorite shortcut keys is to tile all of my, uh, every file that's open, right? So that's what I'll do sometimes, just so I could see everything, because I don't remember the file names that I opened, and that's totally fine, right? Okay, so do this one really fast. Command J, let's select this. Let's actually just cut this. Let's try to do a remove background. 
Not bad. Let's bring it in here. Done. All right, we can close these other files. I'm sorry, it's getting messy. Now, um, when it comes to these renders, hey, Destiny, what's up? Uh, um, uh, yeah, so flowers on the brain, wrapping around the skull. And again, the whole goal is to like have a vision, like to have a point of view, try to, try to say something with a point of view. Like I've been guilty of, yeah, it's fun to make pretty graphics, but can we go beyond that, you know? And that's where we're doing this. We're creating sort of, you know, art with a point of view, right? And really just for ourselves, it might just be for you. So consider it art therapy, sure, why not? Uh, this one. For a lot of these renderings, this is really cool, by the way, and actually I'll do it with this one, because in here, here is my uh, skeleton. And uh, for these skeletons, like if I wanted to put something inside, it's gonna be really hard to select it. But luckily, when you render something out in Dimension, you get these additional layers off to the side. So I can turn on this object selection masks. Turning that on, Actually, let's hide the other one. And it gives me this ability to select uh, different parts of this uh, th this render. So basically this flat image. So that's what I'm doing. Again, guess what? Using a magic wand. Bam, 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 like that. Uh, cool. Um, what else? Okay, remember, I'm gonna use this image, Command J. Actually, let's, here's something interesting. You ready for this? Alexander, good to see you, buddy, what's up? So there's a difference between doing Command J and then dragging a layer to uh, the layer panel. And there's some cases where you wanna do this. Cause what I wanna do now is I want to, uh, let's do a skeleton. Uh, if I do a Command J, bam, it's going to automatically put whatever was selected onto this new layer that I did a command J on, right? That's not really what I want. What I want to do is I just want to duplicate this. So let's go back. Let's make sure I have this selection. Let's duplicate that layer, right? It just duplicates the layer and it doesn't get the selection involved. Because what I want to do instead of just have what's selected, I want to actually have everything and then mask out what's selected. So hopefully that makes sense. Right, so there's that. We have this underneath. We could drag that down. We can put the uh, heart right in there. We could do a number of things, right? But this is just one idea that I'm kind of working on, okay? I probably will be a little bit more straightforward. So I don't know with this version if I'm actually gonna use this skeleton. Um, but yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing fantastic uh, overall. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I should say I'm not I'm not doing bad. I wish I wish I could just go outside and get some exercise and not run into 50 people, right? Okay, so here are some other objects that I actually have already cut out just to save us time, right? So this is what I want to do for this and you've seen this done before, right? So it's like the heart is going to be in a cage of some sort. Wait for it for it. What is this one? So many renders. We're going to open up this one. Uh, everybody look away. Don't look. All right. Let's close this file. Uh, I still get, I have 30 minutes. So I have 30 minutes to make something awesome. Uh, that means something to me. So that's the whole goal uh, right over here. I'm just going to grab this skeleton. This is a different render because I want a different view like this. Ah, so much better, right? Like that. I'm only showing part of it, but something like that, right? We'll make more use of that in a second. Uh, all right, Jason, where are you running? You run and you don't see anyone. I actually live in like downtown Denver and I go up to, I can never think of the name of it. 
Con Conservancy Park or something. Anyways, there's way too many people out in the parks. I'm like, guys, there's too many people here. And yet I'm part of the problem. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to take this and I want to add branches to it. So I have all these different branches. Some are actually already in place, but let's take like this grapevine. This is a perfect example. Let's take this grapevine. I want to make it part of this like superior vena cava, right? I had to look that up. I'm gonna blend these two together, right? Because yeah, we feel trapped in this cage. You know what, we're just, we're full of life and ready to get outside, right? Um, so I'm gonna do this by duplicating the heart layer, taking it up to the top. Uh, let's rasterize it. Let's get rid of this part. Cause I wanna blend it together. Okay, which is not gonna be easy. This already looks pretty cool, like this. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. That's something we could do. I don't know, man. Right? This is one idea, to just have them coming out of the valves. But really what I want to happen is I wanna make it look like they're part of the heart, right? So again, we got all this life in us. Let's take this. I'm gonna actually use the smudge tool. So you can see it right over here. Here's my little smudge tool, my little my little finger, just like, let's smudge it, boop. Right, we wanna make sure the strength is set to 100. Uh... <laughs> oh, Steve, that's funny. Um... Oh, Jason's got a couple parks nearby. I'm jealous, I just wanna like, just slowly jog in peace. That's all I want, right? So with this set strength set to 100, I don't have it sampling all layers, but I can go ahead and grab that and pull it up, right? I'm gonna undo that a couple times. I'm gonna increase my brush size just so it's the size of this, um, of this, uh, this artery here. So then I pull it up and do something like that, okay? So that's one thing I could do, easy enough. Now that it's pulled up there, I can actually get into some of the other transform tools. I can try warp, I could do a number of these. I'm honestly not gonna worry about that. I'm literally gonna use this uh, for most of this because I don't, I don't got that kind of time, right? Right, like that. We're gonna make it look like it's part of that particular branch, not to worry. We gotta blend the colors and everything. So we'll take that heart, add a mask to it, B for brush. Where am my brush at? Boom. How did it get so small? Guess what? You can always reset that tool by clicking right up here. Let's crank up the size, right? And we can kind of blend it in like so, right? Still kind of have that issue where I'm gonna use this grapevine selection. So I've clicked on that layer. I added that as a selection. I'm gonna inverse it. So now I have the outside of that selection selected. So out here, this is what the selected part. I can go to this heart layer and I'm gonna paint with black. So I'm basically using that initial selection and making a mask to have that kind of blend together. Kind of like something like that. Oops. Okay, cool, cool, done. That looks good. Let's do this. Let's puppet warp this, right? We can now warp this into place as well. So I'm gonna pin it down in spots, but I feel like the puppet warp gives me like a lot of control because we really want this to expand out and then blend into this uh, next part right here, this uh, ventricular whatever. I don't know. I, I even looked it up and I can't remember. Paint it black. She's so morbid, right? There we have that, like so. Yeah, we can be non-destructive. We can use, there it is, sharpen, right? We can sharpen that up a little bit if we want to. Uh, for this one, we're gonna have a couple different parts. Command J, ba -ba. let's do that. Let's add a layer mask. Let's 
select the brush. It's gonna fade that out and then change the blend mode. There we go. That's kind of what I'm going for. Cool. All right, we have this blended for, uh, to a certain degree, it's, it's blended. So, uh, so many things still need to happen, right? We're looking at this heart. When we're matching images, we gotta take into an account the lighting, the, just like everything. If this is blending into this like heart-like branch, it should actually have some of these highlights on it, right? I think that's gonna sell it a little bit more. And we need to make sure this is tinted the same color as the heart. I'm gonna get in the tinting of the branch first because that's more of a major edit, like sort of I do global to local edits, like start globally and then sort of work on the specifics. So that's what I'm gonna do here. This grapevine, well, not that one, this one right here. I want this grapevine to match. I want its lights and darks to match the heart, right? So that means taking all these blacks Guess what? They need to be the darkest color, this dark red, okay? Same thing for the highlights. The highlights actually need to be this, um, whatever, taupe pinkish color, right? So you ready for this? Are you ready, Sean? Anel, how the heck are you? And Anel, so Anel has a point of view. Anel's like, hey, you know what? Can you make the heart mechanical or artificial? And that might be like, I don't, I don't need to be, mean to put words in your mouth, but that could be like how you're feeling. Like some days you're just going through the motions. I have a mechanical heart and I'm just going through the motions, right? Um, yeah, and at least for me, I'm like, you know what? My heart has lots of things in it and it has lots of life, just like we have lots of ideas and that's what's happening is bursting out. Uh, uh, okay, so let's kind of do this. I have this vine selected. This is. Again, a master class, so this is a pro tip. I'm gonna go ahead and select curves. I'm gonna select curves. You're thinking curves. Oh, I use that to adjust maybe the brightness and contrast, right, with, uh, you know, and, and the mid-tones as well. You have a lot of that control, right? We can change. I could try to go in here to say red and say, oh, I wanna make this more red. Let's crank that up, right? And let's clip it, by the way, let's clip it. Uh, let's crank it up and I'll try to, that, that actually works a little bit, but it's still, it's still not what we want. So I'm gonna undo that. And uh, what I wanna do, and uh, I'm kind of zoom in on this a little bit. I'm gonna go over here to auto. Actually, you know what, let's do this flyout menu. We have auto options, right? So auto will automatically tint it lights and darks. It doesn't auto set, preset, but I'm gonna go into the auto options. With the auto color correction options, this gives me the opportunity to select the darks, select the lights. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. Find the dark and light colors, bam, right there. Now we can go ahead and for the shadows, yeah, let's pick that red, right? That deep red, bam. You could see we've nailed it. We have control over those dark colors. You could see how that matches up a lot better right now, right? Looks good. Click OK. What about the highlights? The highlights actually look pretty good. I'm impressed with this. But I can go in typically with the highlights and pick that, that highlight color right there, right? And I can play with this some more. I'll make it a little bit lighter. But that's how I can map the larts, the darks and lights to uh, whatever photo I'm trying to match, OK? Now, does that make sense? Uh, please say the name of the tool you use to stretch uh, the heart and branch. Um, I used Puppet Warp, and I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I did that as a shortcut, but check this out. I'm gonna do this really fast on something else. Here's some, here's some crazy leaves right here. We'll do, we'll flip this. Right there. And we'll put it right here. So, here's a situation. You ready for this? One piece. I'm like, oh. I need these two to fit right in there, right? Fit into those uh, whatever ventricular, I don't know what they are, and I feel horrible. Guess what? Uh, into the the artery. Okay, <laughs> let's just use the plain name artery. Uh, so leaves are selected. I'm gonna go to edit, puppet warp. We can see it right over here. I mapped this just as a shortcut key. We'll go to Puppet Warp. Oh, guess what? I get this whole framework that I could deal with. And it's like, hey, cool. Bam, bam, add these pins is what I'm doing. Now I can take this one. 
And let's, I put like kind of some stabilizing pins up here, but now I can take this and move it over, right? Take this, drag it over like that and make sure it's coming out of that particular artery like so, okay? That's what I would do. It would be the same process right over here. So we'll come in here, bam, let's grab it. Straight up delete. I'm gonna do a straight up delete. You ready for this? Bam, deleted it. You're crazy, man. I can't believe you hit delete. Nobody ever deletes pixels. Everybody's like, oh, you should use a layer mask. You know what? I think I know when to use a layer mask. I think I'll be okay. Smudge tool. Again, we just wanna blend these two together and that's what I've been using because it works for me. You do what works for you, right? Stretching that up like so, right? Just want that to kind of match, right? Like that. Joop, 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 joop. Um, I do need to kind of push this in too as well, but you get the idea. I really wish I could. I wish this worked a little bit better, but let's just kind of push that in. Actually, it works pretty well this way. Notice my brush is a hard brush. So um, I'm not gonna get any like blurry lines or anything like that. How is everybody doing by the way? You guys doing good? You live in the dream, huh? You live in the dream. Yeah, it's like pulling up stockings, right? So that's all we wanna do, do that. Um, I can do the same thing with this branch. So just, I will repeat this process just so we're on the same page. We'll try, actually, these branches already have a little bit of a red tint to them, by the way, right? Here's another way to do this. Um, yeah, Justin, thank you so much. Great questions, keep them coming. Uh, another thing I will sometimes do as well, try this. If, if you just wanna do an overall color cast, you could just, this is an easy way is you go in, you select a color, I'll select this red of this heart, and I'll just fill the entire layer with this, this particular red. And then I'll clip it to my leaves, bam, like that. There they are, clipped to the leaves. Now I can go in and change uh, the blend mode. So typically I'll go down in here to like some of the lightens, right? We could see how we have lighten and then screen. So one of these two might work. And all I did is this kind of gives it this sort of like, um, you know, red tint like so, right? So that's like a really fast way that could also work for you. And by the way, you can always come in and add a layer mask and then remove parts as well. I'm trying to get this done before the natives get restless. Uh, so the bright side, I don't feel guilty about the time. I Uh, oh good, Sig Brown, you're taking lots of free online classes, you're doing painting, taking walks, taking pictures. This is what I love to hear, it's like, what are you guys doing with your, uh, with your time? Oh yeah, it's Tim, great. Uh, Color Dodge, my new favor favorite blend mode. Oh, interesting. Let's actually try Color Dodge. Oh, there we go, ah. Tim, Tim for the win. It's a little, it's a little bold. Like you could see this one's a little bit more muted and then you can see color dodge. Ah, I'm into it, let's use it. Hey, ya. Uh. You got it. Groot's cardio system. It's a little, you know, again, it gets a little blown out up there. That's why I'm kind of erasing parts of it because it's just a little, it's a little intense. But now you have two ways to sort of match one image to another, right? We can come in here, maybe grab some more, uh, I don't know, branches, maybe push this out some more. What is that? Right, I'm gonna try to hurry. Uh, Jason Levine's up next. He's gonna be doing some awesome audio master classes. He's doing making your footage look and sound, look, sound, and feel fantastic. I can't read the rest of that, but I assume it's gonna be fantastic. Knowing Jason, it will, right? So take this, just have that go up like that, right? Take this, oh, it didn't, actually got too much there. Let's grab that and go like that. Take this piece, it'll go like that. Take this piece, go up like that, okay? Now all I need to do is kind of jump in and let's do this one real fast. Like 
that. There we are. Now I can kind of jump in and start adding some, some branches or some leaves, whatever I want to do here. Let's move that up, rotate it around. This one's a little bright. Definitely got to got to do some serious work here. In fact, let's just do this. Command J. Let's jump this earlier layer. Let's cheat this. Let's see what happens. There we go. We just tinted that. And no, that doesn't work. <laughs> there we go. This works a little bit better. Again, just really quick, quick and dirty kind of a tinting that. Um, just kind of taking that green down a notch. And again, I don't know if that's really working. I need to typically get everything into position and then I can play with some of that content, right? All I'm going to do right here is kind of chop this off. Oops. Invert. Right, let's get some of those branches in there. Where did these come from? Guess what? I just I just have a library of all sorts of crazy things. We want to have some birds in here. Let's drop in some birds. Right, let's make them a little bit larger, right? You can't cage these birds, right? We are inside for our own safety, and it's a good thing. All right. Using the object selection tool. Actually, no, scratch that. This is what I'm going to do. Remove background. Bam. Done, right? Yeah, I could clean up some of this. In fact, you know what? Let's hit apply layer mask. There we are, selecting that spot. Delete. Done. Right, there's our fun little birds. That still also need to be, uh, they need a little color cast as well, right? Uh, okay, so we're creating heartworks today. Ah, Nadir, heartworks. That's cute. All right, pair of birds, grab them. There we are. Another thing I'm noticing is uh, I love heartworks. I think that's a great, a great phrase. Here's another phrase I was playing with, by the way. If I could only find it. Oh, yeah. This is the other one I was working on is follow your art. Kind of like follow your heart. I read that probably on Pinterest. Let's not kid ourselves. Follow your art. I was going to I was going to hand letter it earlier this week. But again, follow your art. Okay, there we go. So there might be cases where I keep applying this same um, blend mode or um, same uh, curve adjustment layer, because that's where I'm at now. It's like, I'm gonna apply that to these. I'm probably gonna apply it to a ton of other things. Maybe a bunch of butterflies, who knows, right? I'll want to apply that same color cast um, and what I can do is I can take all these layers, group them. So these are my birds and things. Again, sorry everything is so small, but right over here, here's my birds and things. We're gonna take this adjustment layer, the, sorry about that. This curves adjustment layer, duplicate it and what we'll do now with this curves adjustment layer is we can actually clip it to the birds and things. So I don't have to apply that 50 different places, right? And there it is. You can see how it's tinted everything. It does it a little strong. I can take that down a little bit. You get the idea. Uh, okay. So yeah, the color matching technique is awesome. Again, that's what I used for this curve. Works out splendidly. Um, and I know I need to do it with a lot of things. Even for this green branch right here, I'll just drop it into this folder I made, right? We'll drop it into that folder, and you can see it's already kind of tinted it appropriately. And this one we will work on right now. Rotating this around, zoop, like that. It's gonna come out of that one right there, but we're gonna bend it as well. Uh, I think I forgot who just learned about this, Puppet Warp. I have like three shortcuts, to be honest with you. And that's one of my three shortcuts I use all the time. Right, so let's bend that up. Let's take that, do something kind of like that. Right, kind of like that. 
right? I don't want to cover up actually that these that ventricle there. There we go. That that works fine. New layer, clip it to the green branch. Option clicking, bam. You could zoom into that particular object. Uh, B for brush. Actually, let's hot hit I to sample. B for brush. Paint on top, right? We can just kind of blend that in if we want to. So it looks similar. And let's add a little bit more to it. Sorry, I'm not reading chat. Uh, uh, there was a theme for this, I'd call it human nature. Okay, cool. Yeah, ah, I love it, man. We got some writers here. You guys are good. We have writers. I could, I could use you guys like all the time. Because I, yeah. There we go. Right, we have that done. We have a job to do. We better hurry. There we go. Let's get a little butterfly in here. The butterfly is going to be resting. Bring him in right over here. Put him right there. Okay, something like that, right? It could use more leaves as well. All right, I have about 10 minutes. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, yeah, the smudge tool is awesome. Oh, I could show you some, some crazy, crazy skills with the uh, smudge tool. <laughs> All right, here's a branch. There's a couple things. Let's bring this up here, like so. We could do something like this. Having that wrap around like that. In fact, I'm gonna put it in the same folder, birds and things, because it's gonna get tinted. I'll drop that in that folder. Bing. You can see it's kind of changed it. Um, the shadow is a little, could be a little bit darker, right? Here's another pro tip, uh, human nature. I got to start writing these down. These are good suggestions. Let's see what this one is. Ooh, there's this one as well. Oh. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This one's even better. You guys into it? Hopefully you're into it. Still still needs more branches in here, and I don't have a lot of time. I have some cherry blossoms. Maybe these will work for part. Might be a little much, but let's go with it. Right? Bringing it over. Warping it into place. that you ready for this we could really mess with the depth as well so the mode is uh normal but i'm going to change this to distort so watch what happens when i change it to distort you can see it's going to change as i drag this out it's going to get bigger so larger smaller so uh that will actually change this even as i grab this end it actually makes it larger this actually works out pretty well in this case because i want it to be larger to kind of come from that spot right there all right, so do something like that. Lovely cherry blossoms. And you can see how crazy things can get. They can get crazy pretty fast. Uh, human nature still got, life goes on. Uh, oh, Pel Pelmora, I'm glad you like it. it. Means a lot to me. So we'll go into this heart right here. B for brush. My brushes, I usually just use these two because I use it either one at soft or hard edges. So I just go to my softy. It actually has the flow set to 10%. I can change the size and I'll just kind of blend that in, right? That's my softy. Works just like that. Um, so we're dealing with these cherry blossoms. Command J. Let's just rasterize this layer. Because I just want this part right down here. You ready for this? Where, where is my, where's my heart? Let's drag this up. 
This is the part we're working with right here. Let's sharpen it. Make it a little sharper. And for this one, let's blend it in a little bit more like so. And let's change the blend mode, right? So we can come in here. I know I want to go down to one of these uh, overlay, soft light, one of those. So let's do this really fast. I'm gonna use the smudge tool again. Just gonna smudge it to the edge. There we go. Cool, cool. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna do the same thing down here as well. Cause again, if you notice you're having to duplicate a lot of layers, think about just putting them in a layer groups. So that's what I wanna do now. I wanna take this one and this grapevine, instead of having two curves, this one being applied to this one, this one being applied to this one, they kind of both do the same thing. Let's just go ahead and get rid of one and group them into a folder and add that as a clipping mask. Okay, cool. All right, how are you guys doing? Uh, why rasterize? Because I'm, I just didn't have the patience for it. Um, because all I needed was this little part to the trunk. That's the only reason I rasterize it. <laughs> rasterize. Oh yeah. Let's get rid of that. Cool. Oh, I have two more ventricles that I need to take care of. I was planning on naming some of these. Again, this is art with heart. Why not? Oh, so cheesy, right? This is what I wanted to do. Superior Vina Cava. I wanted to make this kind of like a scientific uh, illustration, right? Like a medical illustration was the plan, right? Do something like that. Have some lines that point to different parts. Right? Line tool. There's the superior Fina Cava. It's right here. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the idea. Needs a lot more work, but hang out with me. Um, I think I will hopefully get this squared away and add it to uh, uh, Instagram. So one last thing I'll do to tie this all together is I'll use a color lookup. Go into color lookup. It will hide a multitude of sins, as I like to say. But let's come in here and we'll change this to two strip look, something like that. Right, we can even work on the background, which we didn't get a chance to either, right? So is this the right background or do we get into uh, something that has a gradient, right? The answer is, I don't know, right? See how this changes the entire look of it, right? So again, just some ideas that I still need to kind of work through, uh, but just trying to build something that kind of like, I don't know, inspires me and just kind of says kind of how I'm feeling, you know, it's like, a, I, I don't know. I just want to do something that, uh, you know. Has some meaning rather than, you know, turning a potato into the earth, right? So again, I'm just trying to, oh, like, I like these. Like, I, I actually, you know what, I think gray is the way to go. Maybe, maybe not. I could be wrong. I usually am. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm headed. I don't know, it just it needs work, right? But again, this is changing drastically. We'll go with that for now. I'm running out of time. I only have a couple minutes left. Guess what? I only picked one color lookup and then I just stopped there. But obviously I can go through a lot of these. I can give them all a crisp, warm look when I do that. Actually, no, let's do, if you do like edgy amber, which is way edgy, way too edgy, 
but you can see it just hides a multitude of sins, as I like to say. We can go into Foggy Night, obviously makes it look, just changes the entire mood of the whole piece. If that's what you wanna do, like remember your goal. My goal is to meant, meant for this to be inspiring, right? Not depressing, right? Think, yeah, you know what? I am kind of, we are all cooped up in our cages, but they're here to protect us. Anyways, that's kind of where this is at. Hopefully you like it. I'm gonna let you guys go. You guys have been spectacular. Sorry, I've been working so hard. I haven't had a chance to really even look up at the screen. Um, but uh, give me some more time. I will work on this and uh, will uh, post it to Instagram. Can I get the shining effect on the heart using Photoshop? Oh yeah, that, what I would do is I would literally paint highlights. That's all I would do there. Uh, I love the field of medical illustration as well. I was actually gonna go into that. That was my my other option. Um, is that's actually what I was thinking when I was in art school. It's like, oh, I wanna be a medical illustrator. So I have a ton of those sketches. And then I have a ton of like flowers and mazes and strange things I painted as a kid. It's weird. I did, of course, what do you paint in art class? You end up painting still life, which is flowers. So thanks everybody. I'm gonna work more on this. Thank you so much for your time and uh, uh, all the love. I appreciate you guys. Uh, stay tuned for Jason Levine. He is the man. I appreciate him. I'm sure you will as well as we learn some audio and video. So thank you so much. We will see you soon, everyone, and watch Instagram for the final. Thanks, Justin, Tim, Afroja, everyone. Have a good one. Stick around for the Jay Levine. Thank you.